I want to show everyone what the testing entails because I know people are concerned about testing. I want you to know that just because you've got tested before doesn't mean that you, could, you, you, that you couldn't be positive now, particularly if you were negative before. So uh, even if you've gotten tested before, we want you to come out to one of our testing sites, make an appointment to get tested. Uh, how do you get signed up for testing? You go to www.doineedacovid19test.com. <laughs> www.doineedacovid19test.com to find COVID testing, to sign up so that when you get there, things go quickly, things go smoothly. If you don't have access to the internet, then you can come by the site and we will uh, work with you to get you signed up on, on site, but it will go a lot more quickly if you sign up early before you get there. When you come to the site, they will have things set up so that you can self-swab. This is the swab, this is the specimen container. They will hand it to you in a bag. What you do, they'll open up the swab. Yep, and you turn it right, uh, around your nostril five times, and then put it in your other nostril five times. Then you put it in the tube, and you break it off, cover it up, and put it back in the bag. And that's all it takes. It's very simple, easy, it does not hurt at all, and you will get your test results back in two to three days because we are working with labs outside of the state of Hawaii. Again, as the mayor and the governor mentioned, we don't want to take up capacity here for testing. We want to make sure this is truly surge testing. So please, get tested over the next two weeks. Make sure you know your status Make sure you know the status of the people who you live, learn, work, and pray with and encourage them to get tested so that we can get this virus under control and we can get back to school. We can get back to sports. We can get back to work. We can get back to restaurants. And, and I know we can do this because, again, New York City has a positivity rate less than 1%. And they've done it without a vaccine. They've done it without any miracle drugs. They've done it with the three W's, washing your hands, wearing a mask, and watching your distance, along with making sure people are tested so that they know their status and can behave appropriately. So thank you again for allowing me to demonstrate, uh, Dr. Green, and uh, come out and get tested. Mayor? Thank you. I'm here today to announce that just this morning, sitting down with Governor Ige, he has approved Oahu's request for a stay-at-home, work-at-home order. That order is going to take effect midnight, 1201 Thursday, stay at home, work at home order for two weeks. For two weeks. We're going to see how it goes. We're hopeful that the number will decline. And on top of the other actions we've taken that the people of Oahu have taken, whether it be closing of bars, closing down of large gathering spaces in parks and other places, and no gatherings more than five. On top of this, hopefully we'll see the number decline to a level where we can manage our contact tracing and everything else that we need to do. If it doesn't work, we'd look to continue it, but we're hopeful that it will work. And at that point, we can start to return and open up again. But what's gonna be different when Oahu opens up from the last time? We're gonna use this time to reset what it is we're doing. So at the long term, when we open up, we have a better outcome than we did the first time. So what's gonna be different? And this is critical. One, we're gonna be doing surge testing for the next two weeks. 5,000 tests a day. That's 70,000 tests in 14 days. No city has actually hit the 5,000 level, but we're working hard to do so. And that's being brought to us by the Surgeon General of the United States of America, Surgeon General Adams, who's behind us. He's gonna talk more about this. That's number one, surge testing. Number two, more contact tracing. We're grateful that General Har and the Incident Command has taken on a more aggressive posture on contact tracing. The city wants to join that effort and wants to hire somewhere between 250 and 500 contact tracers to work 
in coordination with the Department of Health and General Hara to do a more aggressive approach to contact tracing. So we know where the virus is, we know what we need to do when we find positives, which leads to the third, third stool, uh, leg of the stool. That's quarantining. When we find those positives, they cannot be quarantined with other members of their family who continue to go to work and spread the virus, Parti particularly in our Pacific Islander community and in our Filipino-American community, where we see an increasing number of cases. And along those lines, we have, last Friday, retain an entire hotel of hundreds of rooms to quarantine folks in that are either positive or come into close contact with positives, including first responders that stand here with us today. And we're working to retain other hotels as need be to address this growing capacity as we are more effective in contact tracing. I'm gonna just uh, speak a little bit about the healthcare situation right now which is what necessitated the strong order from the governor and mayor. And, and that's what it's about. It's about saving lives and getting us back to a place where our economy can again thrive. And it's difficult. It's difficult without strong orders. So here you go. As of today, 215 cases. 215 cases in the state of Hawaii. And this has been about what we've been dealing with for the last two or three weeks. We've been somewhere in the 200s. We have on one occasion tipped over 300 and that was obviously worrisome. A little perspective, and I think this will inform, uh, in many ways, tell the whole story of what the governor and the mayor have been looking at. On August 10th, just 15 days ago, we had 229 cumulative hospitalizations, and we had 105 in our hospitals on that day, on the 10th. That was a number that was pretty easy to deal with across our Queens Hospital, Hawaii Pacific Health, and all of our other hospitals. Flash forward to today. Here we are. August 25th, we have a cumulative number of 397 hospitalizations and 270 currently in our hospitals. We put those two together so you can see. On the 25th, today, we have 165 more individuals in the hospital. And that means it taxes our critical care nurses, our physician community, and the ability to have the medications and keep everyone alive. Therefore, in order to stay at home, we'll keep people alive. To break it down a little bit because you know when people get very sick they end up in the intensive care unit. As we make this order, we still have enough intensive care unit beds available in our state. But now 50 individuals are in the ICU, often requiring ventilation, requiring advanced medications, like the White House approved the other day the convalescent plasma to help keep people alive as well. Dr. Adams told me a story about one of his family members who, thank God, was able to get well after just four days because she quickly got to the hospital and got steroids and convalescent plasma. Our ventilator capacity is adequate, so before it's too late, this order comes to save lives. Finally, the number of active cases, and in many ways, this might be the most informative thing that the governor and, and the mayor were able to look at. Right now, we have 4,472 active cases of COVID here on Oahu. Statewide, not that many more, a total of about 200 statewide outside of Oahu. But almost all of them on Oahu, 4,472. And that means over the next two to three weeks, as people have a physical response to this virus, which can be very lethal, they may need hospitalization. So thus a strong order. Our hospitalization rate has ranged anywhere from about six to 11%, but we have to anticipate of those 4,700 individuals that have become positive, as many as 500 people will go to the hospital. And then finally, the blessing of these tests. By partnering with the federal government to have our firefighters and the city and the state, we can look at areas of great challenge. The Pacific Islander community has been suffering. Though only 4% of our population, they represent 30% of all of our COVID positive cases. And they're suffering at home, multi-generational households, in places that end up landing them in the hospital because they can't get well. And this is why a stay-at-home order will save lives and is very intelligent. We know it's going to hurt. We know it's going to hurt to be home for a short time, but it's also going to save lives and save economic activity going forward. What Surgeon General has brought us for these next two weeks, 5,000 tests a day. We'll be advertising that very vibrantly through the mayor's team, through the governor's team, through social service organizations, we will go to public housing. We will help the Pacific Islander community through my team and others. We will get those tests 
so that when we test people positive, we can do an excellent job tracing and then quarantining and stop this virus. So thank you all. Thank you for including me, Mayor, Governor, and most of all, we have our excellent Surgeon General here. So thank you for understanding everyone. Let's crush this virus in the next two weeks and be safe on the other side. Aloha.